More people in this country are choosing not to have kids, more people are dying earlier, and immigration is, well, a mess. And because of all of that, America will have peak population in the year 2080, and for the first time in more than 100 years, it all goes downhill from there. Now, for some of you, the thought of a population decline is a welcome thought. But for others, a declining population is not a good sign for the health of a country. So before I get into these new numbers, I want to thank my TikTok subscribers for voting for this story as the bonus for this week. If you want to vote too, make sure you subscribe to my page during my next live event, or you can follow these steps and you can subscribe right now. So here's what's going on. The Census Bureau just released its population projections, theories really, about what's going to happen to the U.S. population for the rest of this century. Under the most likely scenario, the U.S. will stop growing by the year 2080 and then will shrink by the year 2100. Now that's a year I never thought I'd be reporting on. This new projection is the first time that the Census Bureau has included a population decline as part of its main outlook. The only other time the U.S. has recorded a population decline was in the year 1918 when the flu pandemic and deployment of more than a million troops produced a small dip in the estimated U.S. population. Today, the Census Bureau can use complicated equations like these to project the expected population. Look, I'm a journalist, not a mathematician. Don't ask me to explain those. But by using these equations, the Census Bureau has come up with three different projection scenarios for the population through the year 2100. Low, medium, and high. But here's the thing. Because of the declining birth rates in this country and the increasing death rates in this country, the Census Bureau says the population in the United States will likely have to rely on immigration to prop it up. One population scenario is based on high immigration, another on medium immigration, and one based on low immigration. Currently, the United States has about 334 million residents. But by the year 2080, our population, according to the medium immigration scenario, would peak at 370 million people. And then we would see that first ever decline in population by the year 2100 to 366 million people. In the high immigration scenario, by the year 2080, we peak at 421 million people. And then by 2021, we keep going up to 435 million people. And in the low immigration scenario, by the year 2080, we're still stuck at 334 million residents, which is the same as what we've got right now. But then by the year 2100, we've dropped all the way down to 319 million residents. And the makeup of the United States, according to these projections, is going to look a lot different too. With fewer babies being born, the age structure of this country will shift. So there will be more adults over the age of 65 than Americans under the age of 18. In the middle immigration scenario, the older age group will surpass the younger age group by the year 2029. In the high scenario, the crossover happens in the year 2030. And in the low immigration scenario, it happens in 2029 as well. This report also projects what the racial makeup of this country will be. And it's a lot different than it is right now. So if you want to read that part of the report, I will email it out to you in my next News Girl News Roundup email. So make sure you sign yourself up. If you've made it this far in the video, good job. And you're probably wondering if the population decline is a good thing or a bad thing. Well, it depends on who you ask. On the bad side, a shift downward in population will likely weigh on the U.S. economy and its geopolitical standing. Now, historically, a country's population size was an indicator of that country's power on the world stage. So a declining population is not great for the country's influence around the world. Domestically, with fewer young people to support the elderly, entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare would face even greater strains than we're already seeing now. Recessions could pop up because the GDP may decline because, again, there are fewer people of working age producing the goods and services that count towards the economic output of America, which also would weaken the U.S.'s position on the world stage. But on the flip side, some say an aging population with a smaller workforce is a good thing. Some countries have actually seen this happen, populations decline, but GDP growth, because the per-person living standard 
increases. The other benefit of a lower population is it counteracts the environmental issues we're seeing in our world and all the negative effects that come with human overpopulation.